It was really nice of Hoyoverse to give us a popular character because of a trademark Guru Guru for free if you clear more of these like simulation universe. And we're going to be talking today in terms of how to build this amazing character who's very very adorable in terms of the Guru Guru follow up attack she does with her Japanese VA. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk in terms of her kit and what she actually does. Alright, so now let's talk about how Hertha works. And in terms of her kit, the one that actually shines and stands out is actually her follow-up attack which we will show in a little bit. Her single target attack is just normal and there's no enhanced mode for her. And her AoE, the nice part is it hits all enemies rather than like 3 units only in some of them. Let's just go ahead and demonstrate this and hopefully if we bring any of them down below 50%, we will see her follow-up attack as well. Alright, so now you see that this uh, unit enemy unit here is below uh, half health so what is going to happen is she's going to have a follow-up attack when an ally actually hits this unit which is in this case herself so we're going to go ahead and just do an aoe attack and you'll see her do a time to toe follow-up attack okay so how this time to toe works which is a major part of a kit in terms of this talent fine i'll do it myself whenever the there's an enemy on the field that is below 50 percent hp and an ally attacks that unit there's only it only procs once per enemy but once it does, she'll launch this like time to toe that we saw earlier. Follow up attacks hits everyone, uh, dealing a certain amount of ice damage. The nice part about this in terms of this scale is if the follow up attack causes other enemy units to drop below 50% life, she will like kind of have a chain so she can just keep going and spinning and spinning and spinning uh, in terms of the number of procs. So in a sense, Hertha does scale quadratically with the number of opponents that we see on the field as well. Very nice to clean up uh, a lot of uh, weaker mobs like some people call it cleaner of trash because you clean up the trash mobs as well uh, very very efficient in terms of just running dailies if you want to just like uh, speed run certain things as well so that's of course in terms of her trademark follow-up ability and a lot of the her kit revolves around this in terms of the skill we saw earlier it's just very simply a aoe damage and if the hp is like uh, higher than 50 percent is, is increased damage of course most of her kit really revolves around her aoe attack and the last part i want to show about is really in terms of the ultimate ability do you know who i am this big diamond it's all yours time for a shot So as you can see, there was a demonstration of her twirling more than once when these two units on the side uh, actually had went below 50% each as well. Okay, now let's go on to the major tracers. Okay, so in terms of Hertha's major tracers, uh, it, I think it varies quite a bit. If you're using her as like an AoE DPS where you're relying a lot on her skill and her ultimate ability, you will definitely want to level up skill and ultimate ability as much as you can because it does very good amounts of AoE damage. But generally for me, uh, how I play her personally is I focus a lot on the talents, just cleaning up a lot of my daily runs as well much quicker. So I really want to focus as high as you can in talent. You will notice that if this is not high enough, your damage coming from her follow-up attacks will actually be very, very low as the multiplier here is actually not very high. But we will see later on in terms of light cones and, and other stuff, we have a way to like boost it up a little bit more as well to do more damage. But overall, if you are running her like as a normal DPS, you want to level all four up uh, equally as well. But I think that for me, I will focus mostly, mostly mainly first on the talent ability as that is the one that uh, really uh, she's known for as well in terms of her overall kit. Especially if you're running elation in the simulated universe where you get a lot of buffs from follow-up attacks, this is the one that is going to trigger most of the elation buffs as well. In terms of our other major tracers, I think all three of them are pretty important. Let's talk about them uh, real quick. Ultimate use deals more damage to frozen enemies. Uh, additional damage is always very nice, but it's of course focused mainly in terms of her ultimate ability. For If you are focusing mostly on her uh, talent ability in terms of her, her time to toll, might not be as useful, but I think it overall good, good damage increase, although slightly conditional. Crowd control debuff is extremely welcome. As you know, uh, she's not able to act if, uh, in terms of a follow-up ability if she's, for example, frozen or a, a, a debuff is applied on her. So this is definitely very welcome. It really reduces the requirement of a cleanser to constantly have to keep their eye out on this character as well. Last but not least, of course, when skill is used, damage boost effect increases by extra 25%. Also, just a very nice amount of bump in damage. The thing about Hertha is you can skip the defensive ones. Like I think this defense boost, or maybe skip is not the right word, like put it as a very low priority. Uh, she generally wants to do a lot more damage. So anything with like, for example, crit rate bonuses or any ice damage bonus here are all very welcome. Defense, maybe not so much, doesn't really attribute directly to her damage. If you're finding yourself 
uh, taking a lot of damage and she doesn't have the sustainability to go into like maybe deeper flaws in the memory of chaos this could be definitely worth investing as well but overall i think i'll focus more on offensive stats and very quickly in terms of a technique this is going to be an enhancement ability which means you can stack it on like other techniques that you're using all at once it increases high attacks for three turns by 40 percent so very nice for a very quick boost in damage if you want to quickly take out uh, the the trash monsters as well Okay, very quickly, now let's talk about Eidolons. I think Eidolons is, is something that everyone should take note of because we will be getting many copies of her from the simulated universe as well. So it's very nice that they actually gave us an E6 character for more or less for free, if you think about it. So first one, E1. If the enemy's HP is 50% of less, basic attack deals additional ice damage equivalent to 40% of Herta's attack. So she scales very nicely with attack. And uh, if, if his HP is less than 50%, of course, more damage coming from basic attack, allowing her to really contribute more from her basic attacking ability. And if you realize after she uses her talent against hardened monsters, she's hardly really very relevant. Uh, she's just mainly providing a little bit additional AoE damage, but not too much as well. So E1 definitely does increase her playability outside of that uh, time to twirl aspect. E2, keep the ball rolling. Every time talent is triggered, this is the one that stacks crit rate uh, up to 5 times. And once you stack 5 times, you basically get like a 15% crit rate. Very nice, especially uh, uh, free stats is always very welcome. This means that theoretically, her cap of crit rate, you want to aim around, I think, 80% because she also has some crit rate uh, in her tracers as well. Next up, we have E4. When talent is triggered, damage is increased by 10%. Again, uh, bo both E2 and E4 are focusing a lot in terms of her talent passive, which is mostly how she's being played. Pretty solid. Uh, as well and of course if you notice uh, this E3 and E5 the one that is more important really is E5 because you really get this talent increase as well the damage coming from her follow-up attacks and last but not least of course we have um, E6 no one can betray me this one is after using an ultimate ability her attack is increased by 25% really just making her much more viable outside of just her follow-up attacks in my opinion I think that the birth of the self definitely is going to be the number one in terms of picking order. If you look at the max level in terms of this birth of the self, you have 96% follow-up attack damage. Since her follow-up attacks only trigger when the target is below 50%, she actually gets the whole uh, damage bonus applied to her as well. 96% is very massive, making up for that very low multiplier that we saw in terms of the attack percentage. If you remember, uh, previously the trace at like level 7 is like 34% of attack and something like that only. Other than that, I do think that the rest are relatively inferior or, or quite significantly inferior. Second place definitely will be uh, Before Dawn, Jing Yuan's Limited Light Cone, which gives very good amounts of... Uh, there is like some follow-up attack here. You get a good amount of skill ultimate damage and crit damage. So this will be like number two in terms of the order. Of course, you might as well put it on other characters who can utilize the overall stats. And if you think about the whole entire game so far, not many characters can use this Light Cone to its full potential except Herta. So I think it's quite efficient in terms of overall account utility. For those of you who maybe don't want to use this or don't have it at good refinements yet, you could consider using the free-to-play Seriousness of Breakfast, which uh, everyone will be able to get this from the simulated the Memory of Chaos haul as well. You can buy it on for free. At max, it gives 24% damage bonus and also a stacking attack when uh, you defeat an enemy, which is nice to have if you don't want to run the other one as well. Other than that, I think that... Um, Today is another peaceful day. It's pretty decent as well to give you a good amount of damage bonus. Herta has 110 energy. So that's something like 22% uh, in terms of damage bonus. Not, not much better in terms of the birth of the self. But especially maybe if you're thinking of playing her as more like a normal DPS where you don't really rely too much on the follow-up attacks. I think that you can deviate away from the birth of the self to the other light cones that we mentioned as well. Okay, relics. In terms of optimal relics, let's talk in terms of what she can use. I think the Musketeer of Wild Wheat, which we all start off with, is pretty decent. She can use quite a lot of the attack bonuses, especially in the two-piece. I don't really like the four-piece so much. She doesn't really scale super well with speed. It's nice for her overall, but I don't think it's like a must build for speed, as we will talk about in terms of the relic builds uh, just after this. And it's very nice for the Musketeer of Wild Wheat because you can run the two-piece here together with another two-piece from the Hunter of Glacial Forest. Because for most of us in the early game, we won't have that maximum amount of crit rate anyway, uh, as our substats are not totally perfect with a lot of tons of crit rate rolls. So I think for the early game, if any of you are wanting to build this character, you can run a two-piece ice damage bonus together with a two-piece Musketeer of Wild Wheat. Very nice at uh, 24%. But of course, towards the later part of the game, you will want to run a four-piece on Herta. She does use her ultimate damage quite well, and having that nice crit damage buff uh, on her for two turns is also really, really great. 
Other than that, I think that the other option would be to run Thief of Shooting Meteor with a very nice break effect. Uh, she does tend to break enemies' weaknesses quite often, especially if uh, she's the only ice uh, unit on the field. I think it's very solid. Uh, in, and whenever she weakness breaks, she also gets additional energy back. Her follow-up uh, attacks tend to break enemies' weaknesses quite well because it procs quite a bit if there are a lot of enemies with ice weakness on the field. Very fantastic. And I think out of all the planner ornaments, one definitely stands out and that would be the inert Salsoto. It gives her the crit rate that she requires and pairs very nicely eventually with Hunter of Glacial Forest for this crit damage buff. And not only that also, uh, when her crit rate is above 50%, not to mention she gets 15% free from her uh, Eidolon 2 as we mentioned previously. So 15% plus 8%, that's 23%. If you just run a crit rate um, uh, body, you already will have probably around 50%. So you can proc this very easily without any substats in terms of luck and RNG at all. And just need a main stat crit rate of course which you can get uh, every month from the battle pass or every patch from the battle pass to choose the main stat. Okay, and not only that, you also get very nice ultimate and follow-up attack damage increased by another 15%, which she can use all of it. So I think Inert Salsoto is like by far my best choice and probably like miles ahead of the rest. Other things you can consider if you if you have a lot of crit rate, you could uh, actually do, uh, for example, this crit damage one, 16% universal. But this substat in terms of this additional crit rate buff is not as attractive as this one to me, since most of her damage will come from follow-up attacks um, most of the time. And this is like one instance of attack only. Other than that, if you are in the early game and you don't have and you want to use your crit rate for other uh, characters, you could of course consider running uh, this space ceiling station where when whereas attack is 12% and when speed is higher than 120, you gain an additional attack. Generally, she won't have too much speed, but if you're running her, for example, with a character like Asta, or maybe you have very nice sub stats as well, uh, you could possibly push it to 120 quite easily as well. Now let's go ahead and talk in terms of my Herta and the main stats that I will be looking for as well. Okay, in terms of my Herta, I'm personally running a 4-piece Guard of Wuthering Snow because I haven't spent too much time farming the Ice Domain yet. I would likely want to switch to that eventually. For me here, I, let's just talk in terms of like main stat. I know that, that things are not like super high level, but what I'm looking for mainly is a few things. I'm mainly looking for attack percentage, I'm looking for crit rate, crit damage, and energy restoration. So not as demanding as like some other characters who require a lot more stats. Uh, Herta is relatively straightforward because she doesn't need speed, she doesn't really care too much about break effect as well in her overall kit. Um, and, and she's a very uh, flexible character in terms of building her because she takes the boots that are not speed. So I think that attack percentage is much better on Herta, especially since her follow-up attacks don't really care in terms of the multiples of like a speed and doesn't really care too much about the turn order as well. So very solid attack percentage uh, wearer as well. And in terms of body, I'm running attack percentage, but I would recommend crit rate for most people as well. For me, I use it on other characters, but I think if you are have very like low percentage of crit rate, attack percentage is better. But as you go towards a higher crit rate, especially if you complete your inert South Soto set, uh, crit rate is definitely going to be much, much better as well. So those are like, in terms of these two, in terms of the planner ornaments, I'm running an ice damage bonus for the planner sphere. And lastly, for the link rope, I'm running an attack percentage one as well. Ideally, of course, I mentioned we want to have that crit rate uh, two piece set in the inert South Soto as well. Let's talk about Herta's best team comps in terms of how I would play her. Personally, because she's an erudition character, I do like to have in terms of my first slot, uh, a Han class character, for example, Dan Heng. You can run Zila, you can run Yan Qing if you wanted to, or even Su Sang. So for example, let's just put one of them in. I, ideally, I don't like to run like two of the same element, but if you are in later game and you want to run a mono element team, of course, Yan Qing will be much better. For now, let's put Su Sang here. So a good single target damage dealer, a good AOE target uh, damage dealer in terms of Herta. Uh, in terms of the third slot, I think running Natasha is a very solid option. In terms of sustain, you could of course run characters like um, Fire MC as well for a bit more uh, taunting away from Herta uh, and a bit of, more of like uh, team white shielding as well. You could run Gepard if you have him, you can run Bailu if you have her as well. Mike 7 is also pretty decent as an alternative. You add a little bit more ice. So for example, if you're running Mike 7 here, you will have a lot of ice breaking. Good for flaws if like you really want to focus on uh, uh, ice break damage as well. So Mike 7 can like put the shield on herself, draw the aggro, uh, and provide a little bit more off-field uh, damage. Not to mention that if she freezes the enemy, Herta also gets certain buffs 
especially with her Eidolons to do more damage on uh, frozen enemies with her ultimate as well. So nice uh, combination to have. And in the last slot, I think you will either want to go for a damage buffer. For example, like you can run Tingyun because Herta doesn't care too much of speed. Asta is good also, but the speed is not really very important for Herta, especially if you're focusing on follow-ups. Bronya is of course a solid option uh, for, for Herta as well. So that's like going the first path, like attack buffer path. But of course, I think another option is you could run Pella in terms of the, the fourth slot where it, it, you really de defense down the whole entire enemy team and also providing a lot more ice as well. So I think that this is possibly a combination you want to go if you want to run for like an ice uh, team itself. And in terms, if you want like a, a full ice, you could consider running, for example, like Lian Ting, Herta, March 7, Pella. March 7, as mentioned, you can switch to Gepard if you have him as well. So I think this is a really solid mono ice team. In, in general. So those are my thoughts in terms of team comms. If you found such videos helpful, do leave us a like and subscribe for more of such future content. We cover a lot of characters in terms of like four star character builds on this channel. So I'll leave two in the end screen right here that you might be interested in to build a team around as well. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.